All right, from from uh, from Bob Sheets. JC and I met as members of the San Diego Junior Magicians Club in our youth and remained the closest of friends. To say that I was influenced along with many others in, uh, in magic would be an understatement. Our late night sessions at Mr. B's and Denny's were the foundation for my close-up work and I was able to reciprocate when I came back from Chicago in 1972. We started, a magic, we started bar magic at Marcos and we worked together many times over the years including the Tower and the Jolly Jester Bar and Magic Island. He was my very best teacher and I was always the student. John also taught me how to be a friend and I'm not, one, I'm not alone because he had scores of those all over the world. I think, you, I think of you often and pray there's a close-up mat and a deck of cards and that marvelous laugh waiting for me when my time comes. You missed Bob Sheets. Um, I'd like to introduce one of his best friends now. Uh, Mr. Um, <laughs> how many stories, oh my gosh, while we're waiting, there's so many thousands of stories from Magic Island to uh, the Magic Lounge to, uh, to um, oh my gosh. Thank you, John. First time I performed at Man first time I performed at the uh, Magic Bar, I was so bad. Jason said, "Who is this guy? Get him the hell out of here. He's making us look bad." And he felt so sorry for me. He took me under his wing and said, oh, "I got to teach him to do it right, otherwise he's going to screw us all up." And that's what he did for years. And especially at the Magic Lounge, uh, when he was getting ready to leave, uh, he trained me to take his job. And we would sit up in the, uh, we would sit up at the Magic Lounge. We closed the bar about 1.30, 2 o'clock, and we wouldn't leave till 4 o'clock. I wouldn't let him leave. We'd be sitting there, and he was, he would just show me this move, show me that move, and he never got tired of it. And I just, I just will always, always thank him for that. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Mr. Jim Patton. I'm so happy to see all of you turned out today. Shit, uh, thank you very much for affording this opportunity. You're the man, and my friend John Kovarovic. John, thanks a lot. Pleasure. Today is a joyous occasion. It's not the time for mourning. That's all in the past for most of us. Many things have been written about JC that uh, linger in one's memory and things that I could have or should have said have been written by others. Oh, I have a few memories of my own which I propose to share with you. And uh, something that's not exactly apropos of the occasion for me, in fact, uh, rather antithetical. Uh, I'm drinking Diet Pepsi. Here's to your good health. <laughs> J.C. Wagner was one of the last of the Buffaloes. When I say that, I mean he was one of a vanishing breed. Oh yes, there are a few survivors. Doc, Bob, and a couple of other guys around the country. But JC was one of those guys that learned his magic not from electronic media. He learned from the conjuring Kabbalah. That knowledge is passed on by word of mouth from person to person or by an object lesson, having seen another master perform. Well, of course, uh, JC was no stranger to the electronic media, having made a few DVDs himself, but then he always knew how to GTFM. It's an inside expression. I made a few notes here that I'd like to share with you. Excuse me. So it is time to celebrate the life and times of our dear friend J.C. Wagner, the really fetching guy. Now I say that uh, based on an expression that was uh, coined by the surfers from the 60s. J.C. was a surfer, being from uh, Ocean Beach. He once told me of uh, a harrowing experience that he had when he first paddled on the surfboard. 
He said, Jim, I was damn near killed. And that was the end of J.C. surfing experience. <laughs> but he was a surfer at heart, I could tell. He had the soul of a surfer. He even looked like a surfer, come to think of it. I, uh, we had the occasion of sharing some time together on uh, last August, August the 4th to be exact. We had driven up to the castle, and it was rather late by the time we got back to my place, so I suggested J.C. sleep over because he was looking pretty tired. And on the way into the garage, he happened to look over at my rack of surfboards, all longboards hanging there on the wall. And he said, damn, Jim, you know, I had, a, I had an old hobie in his balsa. How much do you think that thing would be worth these days? About three grand. He said, Jesus, you're kidding me. Three grand, yes, yes, he was serious. He had no idea of the worth of such a great collectible. Get the mic a little closer, Jim. J.C. was possessed of a great intelligence and an innate folksy style. Jim, put the mic up. You got the mic. He also had a... He also had a keen wit and natural social skills, which ingratiated him to his audience. There are a lot of really funny stories I could relate about J.C., because after all, that's what we're here about, is to have a few laughs. But I'd like to close with this. It's from an old Lakota proverb. When legends die, there is no more dreaming. Where there is no more dreaming, there can be no greatness. Now I spoke these same words at Larry Jennings Memorial at the Magic Castle, and they apply equally to JC. There is a counterpoint, however, to that old proverb, one that says, True legends never die. He will live on to future generations through his written and electronic legacy. JC, buddy, I really love you. Save a place for me at the big session. Uh, I was remiss a little bit earlier, but I wanted to thank Bill Goodwin also for doing the magic for, for us, table to table here, uh, along with Alfonso. Uh, I don't have to thank everybody for showing up. You all showed up here for the same reason. We all love the same guy. Uh, and we always will. Uh, um, we're going to stop now and let everybody tell all their stories table to table, and there are a thousand of them. Uh, please hang around. Have some food, have some drink, and yeah. tell lots of stories. Oh, uh, one, one more? Just yeah. one more. Okay, Jim's got one more story. Let's let him have it. I promised my friend uh, Tony Cabral that I would read this here. This is a story that he wrote on a magician's website, uh, one of the conjuring, uh, conjure nation. Tony wrote. When I was hanging out with J.C. and Jim Patton at MagicCon, J.C. JC shared with me some terrific advice. We were at dinner, me, Jim, John Kogorovic, and he just finished, I think, his latest version of the Vietnam card trick. I followed with one of my favorite impossible locations, one I've been doing for normal people for a few years now. Of course, by that point, I was crawling under the table. Impossible locations aren't my cup of tea. Tony continues, when I finished, JC leaned in and said, now Tony, can I give you some advice? I like you. You're a good card man. And I consider you a friend, so I want to help. Tony continues, and when he was finished, I couldn't thank him enough for his wisdom and willingness to share it with me. For the rest of my life, I'm going to remember what he said whenever I perform that trick. He said, you should summarily relegate that piece of awful, the nearest excrement vessel. <laughs> of course, as we all know, those were JC's exact words. But I used that for the sake of social correctness. His remark was much more to the point. 
and phrased in a more, shall we say, colorful and colloquially descriptive manner. God bless you, Casey. Okay, uh, like I said, there's a thousand stories we can tell, and we, we, we will be telling them here uh, for the next, I don't know how many hours. Uh, one last thing. Um, I'd like to uh, bring Ted back on one more time. Thank you. I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge a couple of young ladies that, that were all part of JC's life. One is Sandy McIntyre, his, his love of 18 years. And the other young lady is my daughter, Lori over here. Lori Wagner. She's responsible for a lot of things, but one of the biggies is putting this video together. She is very good at that. I know because she puts one together at, at all the big birthdays. And you're going to put one together on my 80th, which is about three years. So thank you, Lori. Okay, everybody, it's party time.